on certain days of the week. And if I come in here on a separate day, I meet new people. So. Yeah, we got uh, we got a few few guys on board that were ex operators. Yeah, yeah Lynn was a destroyer. And in my Navy, we had airplanes, submarines, and targets. <laughs> Destroyers were targets. <laughs> All right. So we're in the cruise berthing area, and uh, there were 66 bunks. Each bunk is bigger than you think it is. Uh, the racks were called coffin racks because they opened like clamshells. And in the pan underneath is where you stored your personal belongings and you slept on top. The only privacy a crewman had in the rack was he could close a curtain so he could turn on his reading light and they removed the six racks were in here and these are reading lights uh, so he could read without disturbing the other crewmen okay each rack was also equipped with a wraps rack sack and at the end of 90 days it had 77 of these laying around all stuffed full of dirty clothes we all smelled the same it was, I'm gonna come up with a cologne for men called eau de diesel <laughs> wonderful. It'll be a bestseller. Uniforms on board the boat were <clears throat> one-piece navy blue coveralls, located right behind you there, ma'am. We affectionately called poopy suits, okay? And uh, they're easy to get to and out of. We also used boat shoes, which were slippers that had rubber soles that didn't make noise when we walked around the deck. Did not want to make, did not want to make noise uh, because noise propagates through the hull. Want to do that um, and can be detected for a long ways away. Now, the Navy operates a three section watch. That means six hours on watch and 12 hours off watch. So, at any one time, a third of the crew is sleeping, a third of the crew is on watch, and the other third of the crew are, are where we're going to go next the crew's mess. Right? So, follow me. sleeping third of the crews on watch this is the community center everything happened for the enlisted people here this is called the cruise mess all four meals a day were served here breakfast lunch dinner and midnight rations called mid rats uh, training you know remember I mentioned it takes about 14 months for a guy to qualify this is where they did a lot of their training they had to go through all these manuals piping manuals electrical wiring manuals and they had to know everything by heart this is where the training took place. <clears throat> uh, we play games here. This is where we watch movies. Uh, we could have uh, movies on board. In the early days, it was on 16 millimeter film. And uh, we had all the latest releases from Hollywood, including some that hadn't even been released on the beach yet. Because the Navy had a thing worked out with, the, with, the, uh, with Hollywood so that we could see the movies at the same time the civilian population did. It was really cool. Okay. <clears throat> that was really cool. Watch a movie, hang a screen here, and a projector back there, and the guys would sit around and watch a movie. Let me tell you about the food. Four meals a day was served here. Okay? Now, this is a 20-man mess, mess ex area. There was another six-man table taken out here when they put the ladder in because they turned the place into a museum. So six men sat here, two four-man table, and six men there. It's a total of 20. Well, you got 77 crew plus spooks can't feed them all at the same time. This is how it worked. I'm the cook. 
Now hear this, now hear this. This is the first call to the noon meal for the relieving watch. First call to the noon meal for the relieving watch. And the crew hears that. They start lining up here. The cook, but this is where the galley is, is where the food is prepared. That's a scullery over there where the dishes are clean. The crew would line up here, and when the cook said go, they grab their plates and utensils and come in and sit down. Okay. <clears throat> the food was served to them family style by the uh, mess cooks. The mess cooks were the people who had not been qualified yet, and they always had a hard time. Until they got their dolphins, they always had a hard time. But they'd serve the crew. The crew would eat. They get done. They take their plates, the utensils, and uh, scrape off any leftovers to the scullery crew, which would then begin cleaning the, mission, uh, the dishes. Okay, these things get full of garbage, and each one was full. Remember those weights I was telling you about in the bilges? This is what they look like. This is one of them. And we always had plenty on board, but these also became weights to weight down these containers of garbage so that when we got permission, we could shoot our garbage through a vertical type torpedo tube, tube called the trash disposal unit, and we'd shoot our garbage into the ocean. But here's the thing. You put the weight in there so it couldn't rise to the surface. We did not want to be detected, right? The other thing is if you didn't eat it, it didn't go in there. No cardboard, no paper, no plastic, no tin, no wood, nothing that wasn't food. Because one of the things, things float to the surface and the enemy sees the other stuff in there, they know it was a U.S. Navy submarine and they come looking for us. And that happened two times during my career. Um, not only that, there are some submarines today that go on patrols that are in such sensitive areas that they don't shoot their garbage for the entire 90 day patrol. They store it on board. Now we don't have the diesel smell problem anymore because they're nuclear. <clears throat> but now you start smelling a little bit like, like garbage. Okay? It is not contained. Now, in those days, these were non-galvanized uh, uh, tin which would dissolve in salt water and in two months they were gone. The only thing that was ever left bottom of the ocean was the weight. Today they use a nylon type netting and the only thing that ever gets to the bottom of the ocean is the weight. And the fish enjoy good navy food all the way down. <laughs> so how do you think the food was? Good. Optimal. Very, very good. No? Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Outstanding. Best food in the military. A way to a man's heart is through his stomach. A way to high crew morale on a night day patrol when you're in the middle of the ocean by yourself and you feed them well. So, before the patrol, the uh, cook and a supply officer would get together and they'd lay out the entire menu list for each meal for the entire night day patrol. This is one, of, and each menu had the associated ingredients, you know, like your home, you open up your cookbook, use a pound of this, use three of that. And, well, for each meal, they had it multiplied by the number of people on board. So for each meal, they knew what supplies they had to bring on board. Here is my favorite on this page. This is an actual page from the menu list for October 26, 1970. This is lunch. Prime roast of beef, mashed potatoes, natural beef gravy, buttered green beans, pound cake, and ice cream for dessert as much as you want it, all right? Ice cream, you know what? See that machine right there with the white handle on it? That's an ice cream machine, totally unguarded by adults. <laughs> <laughs> Any flavor you wanted 24-7 as long as it was vanilla. But we had all kinds of 